This video covers the recommended mid-sheath entry procedures for AFL wrapping tube cable. Some WTC designs are manufactured with multiple spiderweb ribbon binder groups. Each of the binder groups can be identified by using the same color code sequence as specified in the TIA 598D optical fiber color coding specification. Each binder group contains 6 or 12 groups of SWR for a total of 72 or 144 fibers as shown in this table. All individual ribbons in the binder group are additionally marked with black ring markings that indicate SWR 1 through 6 or 1 through 12 for easy identification. The tools and materials that may be used to perform the WTC mid-sheath entry procedure are shown here. These materials are typically considered to be standard tools by field technicians for entering armored and non-armored cables. As a standard safety practice, always use cut-resistant or heavy leather gloves to prevent an accidental injury during the cable prepping process. Determine the actual length of cable required for the mid-sheath entry in accordance with the splicing closure manufacturer. Locate and mark the center of the cable access loop with vinyl tape or a marker for measuring purposes. From the center mark, divide the required length equally on each side and mark them using vinyl tape or a marker. From the center of the cable access loop, measure and mark the jacket approximately 6 inches in each direction with the use of vinyl tape or a marker. Place the cable cutter or tubing cutter around the outer jacket at each of the two identified access marks. Carefully rotate the cutter around the cable jacket to score the outer surface. Take care to not cut through the armor layer under the outer jacket. Flex the jacket surface at each of the two ring cut locations. This process should separate the armor between the inner and outer jackets. While wearing specified protective gloves, remove the cable guide cover from the armor entry tool. Visually locate the cable's rip cords between the two jacket layers. Slightly bend the cable at the ring cut location and place the blade beneath the armor and away from the rip cords. Cut the jacket approximately 1 to 2 inches. Remove the armor entry tool and replace the cable guide cover. Reinsert the blade beneath the outer jacket and armor. Continue to cut until an approximately 12 inch window is between the two ring cut locations. Once the outer jacket and armor has been cut, Use a pair of needle nose or flat nose pliers to pry open the cable's outer jacket and armor layer, approximately 5 inches. Slightly bend the cable and place your glove between the inner jacket and outer jacket. Remove the remaining outer jacket and armor, taking care not to damage the rip cords. Cut both of the outer jacket rip cords in the center of the armor entry location. Remove all vinyl tape from the entry location. Using splicing scissors or a cable knife, notch an entry point into the jacket and armor next to the two exposed outer jacket rip cords on each side of the access loop. Pull and insert each of the rip cords into the notches on each side of the cable. Wrap the rip cord around a non-sharp item like a screwdriver or Allen wrench to assist in the pulling process. Starting at one of the two sides, pull each rip cord individually leaving approximately one inch between the ripcord and the mid-sheath entry mark. Pull the second ripcord until it is parallel to the first. Place the cable cutter or tubing cutter around the outer jacket at the original length marking. Carefully rotate the cutter around the cable jacket to score the outer surface. Take care to not cut through the armor layer under the outer jacket. Flex the cable at the scored mark in order to break the armored layer. Pull the rip cords until they're even with or slightly past the ring cut if grounding is required. Separate the two halves of the outer jacket and armor from the inner jacket. 
Apply these procedures on the second side of the access loop to remove the outer jacket and armor layer. After completing this step, all of the outer jacket and armor should be removed within the mid-sheath entry location. Cut the binder and remove the water-blocking tape layer to expose the inner jacket. Place a mark on each end of the inner jacket approximately 1 to 1.5 inches from the previous armored outer jacket cut locations. These markings will be used to identify the jacket removal location. The two inner jacket ripcords are positioned 180 degrees apart on opposite sides of the inner cable jacket. The ripcord locations are identified by a slight ridge in the inner jacket. Center the blade of the AFL jacket shaver tool over the raised portion of the WTC jacket. Slowly draw the tool over the surface of the jacket in the direction of the arrow for approximately 12 inches. Repeat this motion until the ripcord is just starting to be exposed. Shave the second section on the opposite side with approximately 12 to 18 inches between them. Once the inner jacket ripcord is exposed, carefully place a small screwdriver under the ripcord without damaging the fiber. Pull the screwdriver in each direction until a window of approximately 3 to 4 inches is exposed. Turn the cable 180 degrees and repeat this process. Cut each ripcord in the center of the exposed area. Wrap the ripcord around a non-sharp item, like a screwdriver or Allen wrench, to assist in the pulling process. Pull both inner jacket ripcords to approximately 3 inches from the previous armored outer jacket ring cut location. Place the cable or tubing cutter around the inner jacket at the previously identified 1 to 1.5 inch access mark. Carefully rotate the cutter around the cable's jacket to score the outer surface and embedded fiberglass reinforced plastic rods. Pull both of the jacket ripcords until they are even with the inner ring cut location. Apply these procedures on the second side of the inner jacket. Starting at the center of the access loop, separate the two inner jacket halves away from the fiber's protective wrap. Using a cable cutter, separate the jacket into four separate pieces at each of the two ring cut locations. Individually flex the jacket halves to snap the FRP rods within the jacket. Remove each portion of the jacket at the ring cut location. Before exposing the optical bundles, make sure that the prepping surface is clean, dry, and free of debris and potential catch points. Carefully open and peel back the white water blocking wrap from around the fiber bundle groups. Cut and remove the entire wrap except for 1 to 2 inches on each side. With the remaining wrap, fold it over itself covering the cable's jacket edge. With the use of electrical tape, secure the wrap to the end of the outer jacket. Separate and remove the water blocking binders that are interwoven between the SWR bundles. Each fiber grouping is bound by two color-coded binders that maintains each group together for ease of handling and identification. Individual ribbons can be easily removed from a fiber group by simply pulling the binder down from the center, selecting and removing the ribbon to be used, and then returning the binder to its original position. The WTC is manufactured with up to 24 individual fiber bundles. Each of the binder groups will contain 72 or 144 optical fibers bound by two standard color-coded binders. Each binder contains 6 or 12 spiderweb ribbons which contain 12 fibers each. All groups of ribbons are ring marked between 1 and 12 for easy identification. Each spiderweb ribbon contains 12 fibers that are color-coded blue through aqua. Each fiber can be individually separated for single fusion splicing or placed together and mass fusion spliced as a ribbon. Unlike standard cable designs, the FRP rods in the AFL WTC are embedded within the cable jacket and are not required to be secured within the splice closure. Standard procedures for securing the outer jacket are still required per the closure manufacturer's specification. If grounding the cable's armor is a requirement, pull the ripcord slightly past the ring cut as described previously. 
All grounding requirements should be specified by the customer and the splice closure instructions.